from what it is, satellites falling from the sky, and how people are trying to fix it, join me as I reveal the truth about space debris. Number 9. What is space debris? Technically speaking, there are two different meanings to the phrase space debris. The original term was meant to classify the natural objects that reside within space as a whole, meaning things like meteors, comets, and asteroids. The objects that are born from space entities colliding with each other and fragmenting into smaller pieces. However, once humans started to embrace the stars, the term took a change, as humanity as a whole wasn't just sending man up into space, but also satellites, spacecraft, tools, and even whole space stations. And thus, space debris is the term used to talk about how there are a bunch of artificial objects stuck out in the atmosphere of Earth as a whole. At first, you might think of this as only a small thing. Humanity technically hasn't gone into space that often, and thus can't possibly have left a lot of space junk behind, right? And space junk, that's just another term for debris. And that's not the case, because just like the original use of the term, a lot of space debris comes from various objects in the atmosphere colliding with each other, making even more debris. Which brings us to the question of numbers. How many objects are in the sky and the atmosphere? As a whole, the number can be averaged to about 170 million pieces of all shapes and sizes. Number 8. Are we in danger from these pieces? Knowing that there are 170 million objects in the atmosphere over the Earth might cause some people to have concerns. After all, they're just up there waiting to come down, right? Well, not exactly. Most of the objects that are within the atmosphere are within a stable stasis, or an orbit that doesn't let them touch down on the Earth. What's more, just because there are over 140 million objects in the sky doesn't mean that they're all big in terms of size. For example, a study done in early 2019 showed that there are 128 million bits of debris smaller than 1 centimeter, about 900,000 pieces of debris between 1 and 10 centimeters, and around 34,000 pieces of debris larger larger than 10 centimeters estimated to be in orbit around the Earth. And thus, if the objects were suddenly to fall to the Earth, well, they would either burn up in the atmosphere depending on their fall trajectory, or if they were to make it to the ground, they likely wouldn't be big enough or go fast enough to cause serious damage. And to ensure there are no surprises, the United States Strategic Command and other government entities keep track of tens of thousands of space debris pieces to ensure that if one does fall, it wouldn't cause major damage or panic a local area when it lands. Just cross your fingers you aren't right under it when it does fall, though. Number 7. How do so many objects get into the atmosphere? Considering all the times humanity has sent stuff up to the stars, it may be hard to comprehend how millions upon millions of pieces of space junk can be stuck in the atmosphere. But the true answer to how this happened is not about numbers. It's about time. Over the course of humanity's history with the stars, almost 9,000 different kinds of spacecraft have been launched into space. And every time that happens, little pieces of those craft, regardless of whether they're shuttles or satellites or even just test vehicles, leave a trace of what they are behind. And that's just the start. For as time goes on, the atmosphere gets more and more convoluted with space junk, and the odds of things colliding with one another kind of grow. Thus, when a collision happens, more space debris is made and spread out into the atmosphere. A great example of this happened in 2009, when two satellites, one Russian and one American, collided in the space above Siberia. The good thing was that these two satellites were inactive, but the collision, the first documented collision between satellites, caused a lot more space debris as a result. With every passing year with each new mission or attempt to get something into space, more space junk is added to the growing pile. And now for number 6, but first be sure to subscribe to Worldlist if you're new here, and be sure to click the notification bell to get notified of all our latest videos. Number 6. Space Junk Now Affects Space Travel when the first attempts to reach space were done, the idea of colliding with anything short of a random comet or meteor or other piece of natural space debris was ludicrous. 
However, with the atmosphere now filled with various amounts of space debris, NASA and other space agencies have to try to ensure that the flight path of whatever craft or satellite they're launching does not collide or even come close to colliding with various kinds of space debris. NASA, for example, has a long list of guidelines, and they're used to try and ensure that the craft don't hit any space debris. And should the worst come to pass and they are in line of sight of a collision, NASA has a way to relay emergency movement plans to the pilots of the ships in order to make sure that they're able to get out of the way, as well as getting the instructions as quickly as possible so things don't spiral. Just in the last decade or so, multiple maneuvers of this kind have been recorded for both shuttles and the International Space Station, thus showing how seriously they take space debris collisions. Number 5. A lot of space debris comes from satellites. If you wish to point the finger at the objects that arguably cause the most amount of space debris, well, that would be satellites. Over the course of history, many nations have launched satellites into space, and with that caused both voluntary and involuntary space debris to be made. For example, it was calculated that in the atmosphere of Earth right now, there are about 5,000 satellites. However, only 1,950 of them are still working which means that the remaining 3,150 are either inactive, shut down, or damaged. And since they can't bring them down, they're allowed to just hover in space and potentially cause more damage. However, sometimes that happens on the account of the countries who put them up there. China in 2007, for instance, launched a weapon into space as a test, and they fired it directly at a weather satellite that they weren't going to use anymore. The result of this was 3,000 pieces of space debris being created, the largest in a single action that has ever been recorded. Number 4. The Dangers of Space Debris in Space Aside from the collisions of these debris objects, there are other major dangers that space debris poses just in space. Of the 1900 satellites that are up there in space right now, many of them serve different functions. Some are military, some are for science, and some are for communication. Let's just focus on the communication devices for a second. These are the ones that help with cellular phone communication, transmitting radio communications in some instances, and more. If a piece of space debris was to collide with one of these satellites and damage it, then it would cause potential worldwide communication failures, especially if it happened to multiple satellites of this nature. And it would take some time for replacements to be launched into space, which can thus affect the economy, travel, and more. Many planes rely on satellites to guide them when they fly via navigation systems. Focusing on the smaller scale, in space, Astronauts occasionally have to go outside their craft or station in order to do tests and repairs. These suits are specially designed to protect them from the pressures of space, as well as shielding them from the cold and radiation and giving them oxygen. However, they're not designed to survive impacts from space debris. So if one were to come out of nowhere and hit them, they would be in some serious trouble. Number 3. Guess what? It's gonna get worse. There are many factors that contribute to the growth of space debris, and time is one of them. But the thing most people don't realize is that the more that time goes on, the more and more space debris will be launched into the atmosphere, to the extent that even if we stopped all space launches, which isn't likely to happen due to the attempts to go to Mars in the next few years, and just standard space launching ventures, the debris up in the atmosphere will still be there and more collisions are going to happen. According to National Geographic, some simulations were done to see what the debris field in our atmosphere would be like in 200 years. They state the debris larger than about 8 inches across will increase by 1.5 times, but the smaller particles will increase even more. Junk between 4 inches and 8 inches is expected to multiply by 3.2 times, and debris less than 4 inches will grow by a factor of 13 to 20. And as one scientist noted in Science Magazine, in reality, the situation will undoubtedly be worse, because spacecraft and their orbital stages will continue to be launched. So in truth, what we have right now, it's just nothing compared to what the atmosphere will be like in the times to come. Number 2. There are attempts being made to clean up the atmosphere. Easily one of the biggest problems with space debris, aside from not being able to stop it from multiplying, is that due to it being up there in space, it's hard to get rid of it from the surface of the Earth. 
However, there are multiple projects either proposed or being worked on right now to try and get things done in terms of cleaning up the atmosphere. For example, in Japan, their space program is working on a WIP device of sorts that would reach into space and knock objects out of their current orbit. When they do that, the objects will burn up and thus be of no harm to anyone while also not propagating in the atmosphere. Other projects that have been offered include magnets, which could work as most of the space debris is metallic in nature, nets which could grab multiple space debris objects at once and get them falling into the atmosphere and more. Some space programs are even trying to think of ways to limit the debris that occurs when a spacecraft or satellite is launched in order to not add to what's already there. Number 1. The price of cleaning up space is costly. The downside to the many plans to try and fix the atmosphere is that many consider these to be not cost effective. The acts of doing many of these plans will be costly, not just in implementation but also construction and execution. Many scientists have weighed in on this and agree that at present and in the near future, without a radical new technology being found, the cleanup of the atmosphere will have to be put on hold. Barring the discovery of a disruptive technology within the next decade or so, there will be no practical removal solution. Marshall Kaplan, an orbital debris expert, noted, We simply lack the technology to economically clean up space. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching. What did you think about the truth about space debris? Can you even believe there's that much of it floating around in the atmosphere? Do you think that we're in danger of it coming down one day? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to World List, and I'll see you next time.